Mrs. Johnson? Here. Mrs. Weisberg? Here. Mrs. Bays? Mrs. Brooks? Not able to make it tonight. Mrs. Gillier? Here. Mr. Greenstein? Here. Mr. Kirkman? Here. Um, I simply wanted to tell the board and the community this is Dr. Hines' first board meeting, uh, but he was affirmed uh, his first day of work on July 15th. Um, he was not here for the reorganization meeting where all the other officers had to sign their cards. So I simply wanted the public to know that. Thank you. This is Callahan. I'm. Do I have a second? Okay, Dave, all in favor? Thank you. Um, we will now uh, move to student and community comments. I just also want to announce that we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, there's a sheet of paper up at the podium. And for each person who comes up and comments or quest makes, asks a question, we would like you to put down your name and your email address so that it'll be um, easier for us to get back to you with a response. So um, please do so when you get up. Any questions or comments from the community? Good evening. Um, I'm Diego Contreras. I'd like to begin by saying that my family has lived in Port Washington since 1987. My wife has lived here since 1998. I'm here today as a concerned parent, licensed educator, and uh, civil rights activist. I'm hoping that my comments today are the beginning of a move towards Port Washington having an inclusive preschool. Uh, currently, Port Washington does not have an inclusive preschool, and special education for children of that age is uh, divvied out to Nassau County. Uh, I do want to make everyone aware that the um, Individuals with Disabilities Education Act states that children with disabilities um, should be taught in a gen ed setting alongside their typical peers to the maximum extent possible. In Port Washington, only low-income families have access to pre-K, and that's great, but children with special needs receive services in separate settings from their peers. This is discrimination and segregation, is, um, or advertising separate but equal. SPED services through Nassau County creates a situation where Port Schools forces parents to work around their schedule in order to receive itinerant services. This is an added burden to and that doesn't begin to describe the work that the district puts on special needs parents. You have to coordinate screenings, meetings, you have to meet with therapists, you have to do all the logistics yourself, and uh, it's quite burdensome. I want to also make it clear that this could be in violation of the, this could be in violation of the IDA, but specifically, the free and appropriate education clause. It also leaves me wondering why Port Washington is not providing a full continuum of placement in a public school setting. Um, again, I'm hopeful that we can resolve this and that this can be changed. I want to also make it very clear that I will not benefit from an inclusive pre-K in Port Washington. Um, the advantage is just to list a few and not take up too much time of the public that's here. Um, advantages for students with disabilities being in an inclusive setting, uh, they show, it is proven to show significant development and learning gains. They have greater cognitive and communication development than their uh, peers in separate settings, and they're more socially competent. This also benefits children that do not have disabilities, typical children. It begins with, uh, they get more positive developmental, attitudinal, and social outcomes. They show greater compassion and empathy while developing a better understanding of human diversity, which is on the agenda for today. 
They also benefit from learning and developmental supports from teachers who are skilled in giving individual attention to students. This also helps families get greater connection with the community, helps teachers connect with other teachers who have different perspectives and points of views. It, holds, it has teachers hold students with disabilities to higher standards and enables them to differentiate individual student needs. This is something that doesn't have to cost a lot of money. It's something that is done in Massachusetts, which is number one in the country in education. It's also done by Tennessee, which is number 36, 40, I'm sorry. They're number 35 in the nation in education. Knoxville, Tennessee has integrated pre-Ks. Spending, New York is number one in spending. Massachusetts does this, and they're number six. But more interestingly, Tennessee can do this. Excuse me, sir, one second, and I have to apologize. This is completely my fault. I'm new at this, and I forgot to mention that our comments, of community comments are limited to three minutes. Sure, no person. problem. But I thank you for your comments. I just want to finish up by saying Tennessee does this. They're 43 in the state in spending. Thank okay. you. Thank you. First of all, uh, thank, thank you, and if, um, if you wouldn't mind, maybe tomorrow, just send me an email, I would love to meet with the both of you. I, 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 it's very difficult to argue with anything that you just said, so, and I'm saying that as a parent, and I'm saying that certainly as an educator. So uh, the good news is, um, is that we are looking at everything in, regarding our special education program. And um, so I think we'll have some really fruitful conversations and hopefully we can meet over the next week or so. All right, so thank you. Any other questions or comments from the community? Okay, thank you. And again, um, well, first of all, I apologize that we were in executive session. I know people were out here waiting for a while. Apologize for that. And again, I apologize for not mentioning that it's a three minute limit per speaker each time the person gets up to speak. As far as my uh, presenting comments, my first thing is I just want to again welcome Dr. Hines. This is his first meeting and it's hard to believe it's his first meeting because we've been working with him and for those of you who were here last Tuesday night at the meet and greet, there was a much bigger turnout than there is tonight and it was very informative. Um, there'll be another one coming up in, what is the date on that one? September 16th, we'll be moving it to the Schreiber Auditorium to accommodate what is anticipated to, no, to be another big crowd. Um, okay, I am going to turn it over to uh, uh, Beth. Okay, sorry, I thought someone else was doing this. Okay, Dave. Well, thank you. We do not have any student certificates, but we do have a very special school certificate to award today from our good friends at the State Education Department of the State of New York. I have in my hand a uniquely framed certificate celebrating the success of the Port Washington School District in supporting educational excellence, specifically with the Paul D. Schreiber Senior High School. In fact, in celebration of New York State schools that have high academic achievement, growth, and graduation rate, and have made progress during the 2017-2018 school year, our school has earned the distinction of being, wait for it, a recognition school. So uh, on behalf of the entire uh, Paul D. Schreiber Senior High School, I would like to call up its esteemed principal. Please give it up for Ira Pornick. Congratulations, Dr. Pernick, and um, everyone that contributes to the success of Paul D. Schreiber High School. Okay, I'm going to make a congratulations, Dr. Pernick. 
I am going to make a motion for the um, approval of the minutes from uh, the July 1st, 2019 reorganization meeting. Do I have a second, Dave? All in favor? Okay, now also it's another um, motion for the approval of the minutes from the July 1st, 2019 general meeting. Do I have a second? Dave? All in favor? Okay. Um, I don't know, for those of you who have seen the agenda, the discussion item for tonight says uh, diversity and safety. That is actually the diversity committee, which is an ad hoc committee of the Board of Education, and the safety and substance abuse committee, or safety, that's a task force? Task force. Safety and substance abuse task force. Now these are two committees that have been operating for the last, um, I would say, at least eight years each. They're comprised of board members, of community members, of teachers, of other staff, and they've been doing work, um, good work, behind the scenes, and you've seen probably the results of some of it through different events that the Safe and Substance Abuse Task Force has held such as speakers coming in to, to talk about um, use of opioids or driving while under the influence and things like that. With respect to diversity, the committee has also been doing a lot of work to bring our very diverse community together and to um, be inclusive and welcoming to everybody in Port Washington. Both committees, as I say, have been working, and the thing is we haven't really talked about them in the meeting, and we've decided that going forward, we will do like an update on each committee's work, um, probably once a month, because the committees do meet monthly, and depending on what's going on, you know, at each board meeting. So you'll be seeing that in the future. And I think now we will go back to something that I overlooked, and that is the report of the superintendent of schools. I give you Dr. Hines. All right, thank you, President Johnson. Um, actually, I'm going to ask Dr. Fields if you wouldn't mind just to give us a quick update uh, regarding enrollment. Of course. Uh, and I want to thank the community for the warm welcome I've received in my new role in central office. As we're monitoring the summer enrollment, um, we focus mostly on kindergarten. Uh, kindergarten number right now is at 383. If you're wondering how that compares to the class that graduated uh, this past June, our class that graduated is 387. So they're very similar in size as we exit one class and bring in a new class. Um, so enrollment will continue over the next month, um, but we're comfortable with where we are with the kindergarten enrollment at this time. Great. Thank you, Dr. Shields. Um, very quickly, I just want to give uh, an update as far as my first three weeks here. And in some ways, it feels like three months, and I mean it in a very loving way because I've, I've spent a lot of time here, even though I officially started just a few weeks ago. Um, I, I met with uh, many families uh, over the past three weeks. I want to say probably close to individuals, uh, maybe 35 to 40, and counting uh, certainly also counting esteemed colleagues who are here, whether they're teachers or administrators. And I've learned a lot in a very short period of time. Uh, I'm very thankful for that because I think in the end, I'll be able to make, I think, uh, better informed decisions and recommendations uh, to the Board of Education. So I think uh, President Johnson talked about also the, um, the meet and greet. So I, I think I said this last Tuesday. I'm still recovering from that, by the way. Uh, it was uh, a wonderful, wonderful turnout. I was anticipating maybe 15 to 20 uh, people, and uh, you could put a, uh, another zero on that. I think it was close to 175, uh, 175 people, which is wonderful, and it's a testament to this wonderful community, especially in the summertime. I am hoping we double, if not triple that, uh, come September 16th, because, and for those of you who came to the first one, I will try not to make it exactly the same. I'll try to change it up a little bit. But nonetheless, um, I'm very thankful uh, for you coming, and whether you were here physically or virtually uh, through live streaming. My family and I had a wonderful, I had the wonderful opportunity to, uh, to stop by um, the Port Summer Show on Saturday, uh, which was a real, real treat. Um, so if, if you haven't heard, On the Town was, was a real hit 
unfortunately, my uh, my little six-year-old uh, wanted to leave after a half hour. That's because it was past the bedtime. It had nothing to do with the show, it was, but it was fantastic. And if that really is a glimpse into the talent um, of our students as far as their potential and what they have to offer from a, a theater standpoint and music and everything else, then I, I cannot wait for the first day of school, which I know some parents want to hear the first day of school because they're done. They want the kids to, to come back to school. For me, it's my favorite day of the year. It really, really is. Second favorite day of the year is graduation. First day is the first day of school. And it'll be here before you know it because now you're watching uh, – you know, back to school specials starting already, right? So you know, actually, some some of the specials actually started in July, which is a little scary. But nonetheless, you're going to blink your eyes, and it'll be the first day of school. And with that, I can't wait to um, to showcase all the wonderful things that are happening at our elementary, middle, and high school levels because there is a lot of wonderful things happening. So, like. I will close off by saying, if I haven't met you yet and you are here and, and you would like to, to talk about anything, my office is always open. Please email me, call the office, and we will make sure that uh, we can meet because I do want to hear from every single one of you. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hines. Uh, committee report. Um, I don't know if any of the committees have met since the last time, but I do know that we have a, is there anybody from Carlton right now who has any things to report? Okay. Uh, I know budget and facilities. I believe you do have a meeting coming up. Did you? You are correct. Am I? May I share the details? Please do so. Fantastic. The all new and improved budget and facilities meeting will commence. Tuesday, August 13th, that's a week from today, 10 o'clock a.m. at the Daily Annex. And stay tuned because the agenda will be posted tomorrow online. I hope you will all uh, check out our website tomorrow to see the agenda. And more important, I hope to see you, everyone here, as well as all the people watching at home at our budget and facilities meeting next Tuesday, August 13th, 10 a.m. Thank you, Mr. Kirkham. Uh, curriculum committee, I know that we've uh, set goals for the year. But uh, I think the schedule will be, is the schedule public yet or no? Okay, so everybody was saying if everybody heard that, that the curriculum committee meetings will be posted starting tomorrow so you can mark your calendars. Okay, and I, I believe the first one is September 25th, right? So the first meeting is September 25th, but it, all the dates will be posted on the agenda items, the link meetings will be posted as well. Um, action items, I know that we wanted to take out item three, and Mrs. Callahan wants to speak to that. Item three is the authorization for the tax levy for the budget that was voted on in the affirmative by the community. The resolution basically lists the budget of $160,556,916 along with the levy, which is $140,955,616. Uh, the form that the board does have to sign in duplicate also lists the library budget and the library levy. So I am asking you to please approve this resolution as will be amended tomorrow because there's something that doesn't seem accurate in the library's levy. They're listing it as the total amount of their budget and that really is not an accurate number. So that will be corrected before it goes to the county, but certainly this has to get to them by the 15th of the month. So I need a voice vote for each board member, a yay or a nay. Um, Mrs. Johnson? Uh, yes. Mrs. Weisberg? Yes. Mr. Greenstein? Yes. Mr. Kirpin? Yay. Thank you. I'll pass the forms. Oh, Miss Hilliar, I'm sorry. Thank you. 
All the other items can be taken as you usually do. Okay, and we're going to sign um, after the meeting. What is this? No, I'm right passing now? them. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so I am moving to approve action items A1. through D12. All those in favor? Oh, do I have a second? Yes, Dave, thank you. All those in favor? Okay, I just also want to make mention of three very generous gifts to the district. We have a gift by the um, Ed Foundation. Thank you to the Ed Foundation for their generosity. We have a gift from the um, Weber HSA. Thank you very much. And a donation from the Brodsky Family Foundation. And I thank you to the Brodsky Family and the Foundation. Okay, next item is um, we have two board policies that are on the agenda tonight for adoption. Uh, policy A is 5105, education of students in foster care. Do I have a second for the adoption of that policy? Okay. Um, Mr. Greenstein, second? Okay, all those in favor? Thank you. Second policy is policy 5153, Education of homeless children. Do I have a second? Mr. Kirpin. All those in favor? Thank you. Any old business? Any new business? Okay, uh, second opportunity for the community to be heard and I'm reminding people that there's a three minute limit to your comments. Anybody? Okay, the meeting is adjourned. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight on this beautiful summer night and enjoy the rest of the summer. Thank you.